Plaid Enterprises Incorporated. Our quality paints, stencils, and other tools will make your next project so beautiful, so easy, so Plaid. Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I created the One Stroke Technique and I want to show you how easy it is to paint with little steps that graduate until you have a beautiful flower or a beautiful scene or a beautiful project that you finished. And let me show you how that happens. And it happens with brushes that we're going to go step by step on learning how to do the, use the brushes. And I'm going to show you each brush and how it's used and mostly how to load it because loading is the very most important thing when we're doing one stroke painting. One stroke means we blend, shade, and highlight in every stroke that we make. And the most important thing that I think, besides loading the brush, that's part of the technique of it, but the tools that you need are really thick, creamy paint. And I'm using, this is not a commercial, it's the truth. Folk art paint is what I use because it's thicker and it's creamy, and I need that thickness of the paint. I can't use thin paint. I need thick paint loaded into my brush so that we can do all the strokes, the blending, shading, and highlighting. We need a very, we need a dark color usually and a really light color to get the depth that we want to get. And so the most important thing is how to load that brush to get that shading. And then there's three steps. We're going to load the brush two-thirds full. We're going to have our handle straight up and down. And we're going to put lots of pressure. And the pressure on the bristles is what gives us that beautiful shading. So let's get busy. Let me show you some t other tools that make it easier for you to do. First of all, you can see the paint I've been talking around, about. It's around the plate, and I'm just using a foam plate. Paper plates or, or wet palettes or whatever that other people might use won't, use, won't work well for one stroke because we don't want any moisture and we don't want the, the paper to uh, take away the moisture in the paint. So this is like tube acrylic out of a bottle. See how I space it around the plate? Then we also have floating medium, which is the fluff. Look at this. This is the fluff that's inside the paint with no pigment in it. It dries the same and in about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. It will dry the same as the paint because it's the same thing without uh, pigment in it, okay? You'll see that this caddy that I have, you just pinch the edge, pull it out. This makes it easy to throw away because I have, I have seven children, actually, and I have no patience for anything that takes a long time to do. I like to do everything really quick and have a good time while I'm doing it, since my time was always very limited, all right? So what I want to show you is the caddy that we have here is for our brushes. What is important about this caddy is that we're using flat brushes, and when we're working in our basin, we need, can you hear this? We need to rake along the basin to clean out the paint out of this brush. This right here is the ferrule, okay? So we don't want any paint to be in here. So that's what you're going to have that rake there for, okay? Then we have a rest in this basin. So you can lean this just like that and have a rest so that the tips of the bristles don't get bent, all right? Then we have a place right here to let, you know what happens is the brush, let me get it in the right one there. The water needs to run out so it doesn't dry in the handle and crack the handle. All right, and that's what will happen if the water gets down into the handle. Then we put the brush there if we have it loaded or we're, we're putting it there to rest. So that's what the basin does and this is what the palette does for you. All right, now we're gonna talk about different brushes before I load. See, I'm anxious to load. I just wanna show you though first a few things about the brushes that I'm gonna use. I use a lot of flat brushes, and with a flat brush, we have a really good chisel edge because we have a synthetic nylon bristle. Chisel edge, side of the bristles, when I say side load, it's this edge, okay? Chisel edge is right here, that's the tip of the bristles, okay, right there. 
all right? And then this is the flat of the brush right here. All right, so when I'm flat side, flat side to load, that's what we'll be talking about. And like I told you a minute ago, this right here is the ferrule and then our handle. So when I say handle tip, I'll be talking about right here. All right, so we're using flat brushes. We have everything from a, like a two flat to an inch and a half brush, and you'll have different sizes that we're gonna be showing you when we're doing this, okay? Now, we also have some new brushes that were new to me over all the years of me painting because I only use flat brushes, but I found out these two new brushes have been really nice for stroking. This is an angle brush. What happens is that this edge of the brush gets out of the way when we're trying to stroke, and then this edge right here, we can do a lot more with if we don't have to worry about getting this edge out. And I'll show you the, some tricks of that brush. This is another flat brush, but it's called a filbert because it's cu cut and sculptured at the edge, so it has a rounded tip for flowers and little one-stroke leaves that I'll show you. All right, then we have scruffy brush. I have four different sizes of scruffy. I have a little small, little teeny brush to get inside little teeny uh, centers of flowers, and we have an inch and a half, big, big scruffy, and this is a medium scruffy right here, okay? And this brush, when we pull it out of the package, I'm gonna show you that you have to fluff it because when this pulls out of the package, it's very flat. All right, this edge right here is real flat. And if you paint with it flat, it's not gonna work well for you. So let's go over here and show you in the basin. We have to paint with this brush totally dry when we paint, but to fluff it, if you pounce in the bottom, that's how you'd be cleaning this brush out too, if it had paint. You pounce to get out the sizing out of the brush when it's new. You pinch the silver, which is the ferrule, with your paper towel, okay, that gets the excess water out. Then you take and you twist this brush right here to fluff the bristles, okay? Now, it looks like I'm destroying this brush, but actually, it likes it because it makes it nice and fluffy. It's almost like a makeup brush, see that? Nice and fluffy. Now, that's where you're ready to paint because you've dried it out, and actually, when you, you clean it, you do the same thing, and then you put it up and you have it ready to use again. And it goes all the way down to this small one, see this? Little teeny small one. Same thing. These are natural hairs. So we don't want to be raking those on the basin. Then we have our script liner. This brush right here, look at this brush. This brush we're using with water a lot. The important thing about this brush is I have longer bristles. I have two. I have a number one script liner and a two script liner. The key is that we want to be on the tip of this because that's mostly where we're going to do all our work is right on the tip. I made it longer with more bristles so it just runs down to the tip. Now, while I'm talking about that, the difference in my flat brush than most other brushes of their size is they're thinner right here in the ferrule area and they're longer bristles. And the reason I do that is I can fill this brush full of paint, I can wiggle, and when I lift, it springs right back up because the bristles have um, because there's so many in there, so thin and so long, it works perfect that way. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is load the brushes, which is what I've been trying to do earlier. And we want to go to, we've got the dampen brush. I'm getting ahead of myself. Watch. We're going to dampen the brush. We lay it on the paper towel. See how I'm pushing down? Just like that to get the excess water out of your brush. Because we're not going to use water. You don't go to your basin anymore, okay, except to clean the brush. First step was we almost dip paint out of the brush, I mean out of the puddle. Then we pick up out of the berry wine puddle, lots of paint. And then I like to have a little space in between because you can go back and forth right here, like a wisp broom, back and forth, back and forth, push hard. Or if you can't do it right there, you can dip. This is my second dipping. I'll go right here and I don't want you to be any larger than like an inch and a half to two inches. If you wipe all over your palette as you're working, you'll be taking off the paint you're picking up. Now, the first time you do really hard, and people say, oh, there's ridges on both sides of paint. Well, that's okay. What the key is, is that you got to get the paint into the center of the brush bristles, all the way into the middle of the bristles, okay? And to do that, you've got to work hard to get it in there, okay? But what you do is you release pressure a little bit more each time you pick up paint. Now, Absolutely, it's a rule. You gotta have paint at least two thirds up the bristles before you're ready to paint, okay? Now, before it's totally loaded, it's gotta be two thirds full up the bristles. Now, that's double loading, all right? Now, when we want to multi-load, or when we wanna start painting, let's go back to if we wanna start painting. When we wanna start painting, you dip gently, dip gently, not scooping anymore, and you paint. 
So let me show you a stroke right here. When I say dip, dip, stroke, where this is one of my plastic reusable teaching guides. It's laminated, so you can go right over it. We right away push and stroke. We don't go, let's go back over here. We don't dip, dip, work it in, stroke, OK? We dip, dip, and come right here and stroke. We can even go like this in the beginning to smooth it out if you need to, all right? And then we pick up paint almost every stroke. Look, I go back, dip, dip, stroke. Come back over here and stroke again. All right, that's exactly what we do. Now let's say we want to multi-load the brush. Same effect. Right here, the brush is loaded. All right, even if you pick up, let's say I pick up the wrong color on the wrong side of the brush. Happens all the time. See that? You don't go to water. You go right here. Wipe it off because you've just wiped off what's on the act outside of the bristles. Pick up white, very white, work it back in again. There we go. If you go to the water, though, you've got that whole long process to do over again. The other thing I tell everybody to do is when you're dipping, work it in quick. Don't go slow, slow, work it in. Just quickly work it into the brush. All right, dip yellow, dip white, dip berry wine. Now we have three colors. Do we work it in? No. We go right over here. And right here, if we were doing this stroke, for instance, we would go one, two, and what are we doing? We're literally working it in right there as we're blending. We're going to go one, two, three. If we don't like it, we might go four, five, six. But it's one, two, three, start is what I usually do. And then we pull our stroke, and we come back over, dip, 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 three dips, dip, dip, dip. All right, and then we go right here, and we paint. OK, now that's multi-loading. One of the keys I do with multi-loading, whether it's with the scruffy brush or the flat brush, we're going to pick up light colors on the light edge of the brush, dark colors on the dark. All right, so if I wanted some yellow, you saw I put the yellow on the lighter edge. And say I wanted some purple with my berry wine, I would put that dark color on the dark edge. All right, now, this reusable teaching guide that I just showed you, I'm going to take my wipes. I've got one-stroke wipes. If you don't have those, you can use a dampened paper towel because it's water-based acrylic. There's no smell, which is great for you guys who might have allergies. OK, and you just wipe it off. Oops. Wipe it off, and you're ready to paint again. OK. Now, what we're going to do is load the next brush. Now, now, before I go further, I want to show you. This is all the brushes from 12, size 12 and up. For size 12 and smaller, which means anything, you can do the 12 either way, all right? So to load this, let me turn this around. To load the rest of the brushes, say I'm going to do a small brush. Let me make sure you can see this. OK, with the, small, the 12 or smaller, I'm going to dip all, see, let's pull out. Let me turn it around. I'm going to get a good positioning for you there. There, we're going to pull out from the berry wine one color on the side, each side. Remember, it's on the flat part of the bristle. All right, now I'm going to side load my second color. All right, that means it's easier than trying to double load the little brushes, OK? Then I'm going to go next. Remember what I said, the side edge of the brush. We're going to side load back and forth right next to my second color. Now, what I want to tell you with this is it's loaded. Now I'm going to pick up more paint. Now, to pick up more paint with this brush, we're going to dip. Every once in a while, we need to go on the berry wine. Say we don't. Say you have plenty of berry wine there because you have before. You don't have to pick up berry wine every time. But then you can dip white, stroke the, the second color, and then paint. So with the large brush, you dip, dip, paint. With this one, you're going to dip, stroke, paint. All right? So say that to yourself when you're trying to, to practice at first. And that'll help you with the loading. Loading, I want to make sure that your palette, that this right here, that all your puddles stay clean and neat and not light pink all the way across one color. I don't want that. I want you to keep the white and the berry wine separate. And if it starts getting muddy and your brush starts getting muddy, then go get a new palette and start all over. All right? Floating medium. Let me show you how to use that. If you're loading this brush and you're painting and it's really dry, like I'm going to be painting here on, on my um, easel up here on the paper, 
I'm going to dip into the floating medium with a totally loaded brush. Now, I don't use water because I don't want my paint to get muddy. That's why I'm using thick paint. Well, I also don't want to use this floating medium too often. I want to dip straight into it, all right? Then you come here and go one, two, maybe even three, and you start painting. And only go get that floating medium every third to fourth stroke, okay? There. Now, let's paint some things, some elements, with this flat brush before we start with any other brush. I want to go over some things that you can paint with this brush, okay? We're going to paint our rose, our rose petal. Let's start on this side. If you're left-handed, you would start where, where my strokes normally say to end, okay? Now, here is the stroke we're going to start with. One, two, three. We're going to do a seashell where we, where we make all of our roses, our pansies. There's a part of our leaf is made like this, and then we slide to end, okay? So it's one, two, three, wiggle or scrub the floor, and pull, and then slide down, okay? That's the stroke we're wanting to do. We're not wanting to rock the brush. We don't do that. We don't pounce the brush, okay? We're picking up paint. We're keeping the lighter color on the outside edge, and we're going to overlap strokes. And the beautiful thing about one stroke, if you don't like a stroke you've done, you pick up fresh paint and you restroke over it. If the stroke is wet, you can keep painting, stroke upon stroke, without letting it dry. Okay? Now, see, the way I keep it consistently, the right shade around, is doing that starter stroke in the beginning. Now, I'm going to add same brush. I'm going to go up and over. I'm going to add a C, um, a rosebud in the center of that rose. Okay, if I was just doing the rosebud, which is what I was practicing on that teaching guide, I'd go up and over, line to line. Then on the same two lines, the same height, I'm gonna watch the white edge of my brush. And most of the time I'm gonna be telling you, watch the outer edge of your brush, because that's what makes your stroke pretty. Okay, and then we do another stroke. See all those streaks in there? If I don't like those, I pick up fresh paint and I restroke right over it. See how I can clean that up? Now, to do the second layer of petals here, we're gonna pick up more paint. And every time I'm away from our painting here, it means I'm picking up paint. Okay, let me bring this up and show you again. We're gonna go right here. I'm gonna go like this, dip, dip, right here. One, two, three. The only time you stroke next to the petal with this big brush is if what if what was happening if it was getting real thick and you're losing that nice thin chisel every once in a while you can pat it out on your palette okay now i've got a secret weapon a new br a brush i'm going to show you and that's the angle brush so we'll save that for doing that now let me show you a couple of other flowers that we're all going to do i'm going to paint all these with the chisel edge of the brush now i've taken picked up yellow and purple and let me show you some other flowers we can do we can do a five petal flower which is like a big teardrop, okay? Let me do it this way. We start here, push, slide back up. Okay, now if you notice, this was the second stroke to the rose petal, to the rose bud, I'm sorry. So all we're doing now is doing the same thing, but we're closing up the top right there. Instead of having the U, we're gonna close it up right there, okay? Let me slide this up a little bit because it's bouncing around on me there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we just keep picking up paint. And let's do, let's don't say they're teardrops. We can say they're raindrops. Teardrops are sad. I don't want you to have teardrops from stroking. I want you to have a good time while you're doing your strokes. All the way around. We chisel. See, I don't twist my wrist at all. Do you see just the bristles are doing the work? And that's really important. You do five petals. Then you take the handle of your brush, and we do dip dot. Watch this. We dip dot, a fresh dot in each one of those flowers that you do. All right, let me show you how we do a hydrangea. And I'm using a large brush because I want you to see this but uh, really close. But I would normally probably use a number 12 to do this. We're going to slide up. Don't lift the brush and slide back down. Let's do that a few more times. All right, we're going to start here 
See, I don't like the streaks that I have in here. It might look okay to you, but up here, it's not, it's not perfectly smooth there. Touch, push to come back. Now, hydrangea, I use those, those little teardrop strokes usually. But a real hydrangea has that movement to it. See, that happens in one stroke. Now, you can take your little script liner with thick paint and go in there and just dot the center and give it a little highlight. All right, and the hydrangea has a little teeny little dot. Okay? And I probably would use a brighter yellow. Let me squeeze out a brighter yellow so I'll have it for the next flower that we're gonna do. Okay. Now, let's do a couple of other strokes. We're gonna do like a little wildflower. The daisy, the wildflower. There's lots of things that are painted with this stroke. Let's come over here. We're gonna stand up on the chisel and we're gonna lean downward and pull. Now, a lot of people will touch. That's not what we're doing. We gotta touch and pull. That pulling motion gives us the shading and the streaks that we need. This is like a wildflower that we're gonna do and it's all on the chisel edge of the brush. I'm walking it from the left to right. That's with the flat brush, okay? And it even looks pretty when it starts splitting off like that, all right? Nature's not perfect. We're just gonna have fun doing little wildflowers, okay? Now, if I wanna do a thistle, Okay, see this stroke was downward, all right? The thistle's up. We're flipping the wrist. You know, we're flipping the brush up. This is not normally what we do. I tell you to take your whole arm with you. We're flipping, okay? Which means you touch, tilt back, and drag purple little bristles, okay? Now some strokes will go out like this instead of the way we're just showing you. Say that got too purple. Now let me tell you what I do. I lead. Whenever I'm working on the chisel edge, I lead with a lighter color. Did you see coming down here, I pulled down with a lighter color? Okay, when I'm going up, I lead, L with L. Lead, light, okay, up. So, I've got it all dark and I feel like, oh, it's too dark, I'm not happy with it. Turn the brush over. This is an exception to the rule. You can come in there and put a little light back in there. And then say, oops, I got it too dark. Guess what we do? turn it, I mean, too light. What we do is we turn it around, add a few more dark strokes. Okay, there we go. Now, those are just some little strokes that you can do with the, with the chisel edge of the brush. But now I'm gonna pick up a smaller number 12 and show you some more fun things that we can do with this flat brush. We're, we're gonna start on the chisel. We're gonna lean to the side. Stand back up, lean to the side, stand back up, lean to the side, and that's making our ribbon. You see how easy that was? If you're doing a loop, you're gonna slide down, push, stand back up, push, just like that. All right, now we can do a lot of little strokes for even, for instance, a daisy stroke. Look at this, let's come way over here. With the daisy stroke, we touch, lean, and we push a little bit more. All right, now I'm doing this with the flat of the brush. A little bit later, I'm gonna show you how we do this with a filbert. But see, I feel like I can pretty much get a nice curved edge out here. But sometimes, you'll be surprised that how much easier it is with another brush that, that um, is made to do that, actually. All right? Now, I wanna spend a few minutes with a flat brush doing some leaves, okay? We clean, rake this out. Flat brush, we're gonna pick up berry wine and some light yellow or white. You can multi-load. Okay, I want you to see how similar this leaf. Oh, see, did I get it two-thirds full? I'll make sure I got it plenty full. Then we're gonna go, we put our V, see that? We dot it. See how I did that, though? I just touched. There's no big, intense way to do that. One, two, three, start scrubbing, pull, and what do you see? There's that seashell. Now, all you do is let the brush stand up. One, two, three. And you know, everybody says one side's harder, one side's easier for me than the other side. Well, everybody has a side that's easier. So if you have an easier side, or say this is your difficult side, do your difficult side first. See my stroke, I don't like my stroke. I pick up more paint and I just stroke like right back over it. And then the difficult side, you, I would do the easy side where it's normally difficult. 
and your difficult side on the side that's normally easy and see how that works, okay? All right, now hopefully that made some sense to you, <laughs> even if it didn't mean to me. Here we go. Now I wanna show you, you can slide, push, slide. All right, on one side, wiggle on the other side. Let me show you another leaf. All this is on the chisel. We're gonna slide up, slide back down, or push, push. So that was chisel, press, t chisel, press, okay? Let's do this right here. We're gonna slide up. If I'm on the chisel and I'm sliding up, I'm pushing down, roll the brush in my fingers and slide down. All right, and we use that for irises and tulips and different flowers like that. So isn't that kind of fun? Let's come here and do one more turn leaf. We're gonna do this, one, two, three. That's the side we wiggle. This side, we do one, two, three. We start wiggling and then watch. We roll the brush and our fingers to the tip. All right, and we pull a stem into that. Now let me show you a one stroke leaf. One stroke leaf we use a lot, and this is what we're gonna do. Push, turn, lift. All right, and we pull the stem into it. Push, turn, lift. Push, turn, lift, pull a stem. Now that's with a flat brush. Let me show you a little trick to make that easier. If I find a place, we're filling up our page. Say here's an arrow, all right? If you start the stroke on this side of the arrow, can you see that right there? Push down and then slide down that point. That might make that leaf easier for you. I have a friend, Mary Ann, who showed me how to do that the other day. And I said, oh, that ought to make it easier for people. Okay. Same thing. Let me show you real quick that you can make a butterfly out of that. Same brush. Push, lift, the same stroke, but you just gotta not trick yourself and think it's a different color. Two little daisy strokes. Then we just go in here and put the body, which I'll show you how to do that later, and the antenna, and you have a butterfly. So we build strokes by using simple, simple strokes, and we build all these strokes together, and then we have something that we're amazed, like a butterfly. All right, now what I wanna do is show you the angle brush. Now the angle brush, the only thing I found a little tricky about this brush is figuring out which color to put on which side, all right? So the side that I'm doing, the outer edge, remember I concentrate a lot on watching the outer edge. The side that I'm gonna put on the outer edge on this brush would go on the point, okay? Now this was trickier when I was just trying to do the leaves with this to do the calyx on, on around my roses, okay? Now, so I want the white on the outer edge to do my rose. So I'm gonna dip in to the white, all right? I'm gonna even dip some sunflower at the same time because I'm gonna want both colors. And I'm gonna stroke next to the berry wine. So the berry wine is gonna be on the shorter bristles. Does that make sense? Because it's gonna be the inside of the rose. You get pushed just as hard on this, but you load it just the same way. It's just the only trick is trying to figure out which edge you should put the color. And, and after you stroke a little bit, it'll be easy for you to come figure this out. All right, now we're gonna touch the edge of this rose. Remember the bud in here? What happens is that you can use the flat brush to fill in here, but I'm telling you to touch, lean out, and lift the berry wine. Well, this brush, you touch, lean out, and all you do is come across because there isn't any berry wine in the way. Okay, let's do it again. We touch, lean out, and just cross across. There's no, what happens with many of my artists out there, they're coming across and they're making a mess and, and after they've got the rose really pretty, okay? Lean, so you can lean that light edge out all you want because it's just gonna slice in there. You, with this little brush, you can put lots of little slices in there and fill in because it's just this little edge of it. You can also go to your rose bud like this and fold some across if you want. See how I did that? We touched and we just folded it across. Chisel, there's all sorts of things you can do with that brush to make that bud look lacier or that rose look lacier. Okay, I'm gonna pick up, to do a calico around that rose, but I just messed up. <laughs> I'm gonna take, and I want to 
start and come around. I want to use this point of this um, angle brush to pull my calyx around the rose. But you know what, before I do that, while this brush is loaded, let me show you really quick how to use this brush for a ribbon. I don't want to change that paint before I try to show you that, okay? What we're going to do on this is we chisel, lean to the side, chisel, which means it just comes right back up for you so easy. You don't have to worry about it because it's going, you know, before I had to make sure that you're all the way up on the edge. But if you push it all, the minute you stand up, that berry winds out of the way, okay? All right, there we go. Now. Let's take and put some green. Now I'm gonna remember I'm coming this way, so I wanna be dragging the lighter, the darker color. So I'm gonna put the dark green on the point this time. I know that might sound confusing, but I have to hold it up here and figure out what do I want to show. I wanna drag green bristles, okay? And I want the lighter color to be out of the way. See that? So I touch, lean forward, and then drag those little green bristles around the rose. And you know what? A lot of people that are painting with me say, oh, my calyx are never pretty. Well, now they can be because all you're working with is this thin, thin little, little teeny bristles. Touch, lean away, and pull. For all you guys who are painting vines out there that you're pushing like this and they're real thick and you're not happy, well, with this brush, you just touch, tilt a little bit, and you can go on forever with these little vines. Okay, that needs a little bit of water, but see, they can be really nice and thin with this brush. All right, so you can fill inside your rose, you pull your stems, your vines, your ribbons, lots of fun things to do with this brush. All right, now let's move this and we will go to a few more brushes. All right, now we're gonna use the filbert. When we're using the filbert, we're gonna pick up two ways. You can pick up all white and just stroke with that, in fact. Let me show you how I've done this. I'll do yellow so you can see it. I can stand up on the edge of my brush, push, lift, and do a perfect petal every time, okay? Just on the edge of the brush. Let's get some berry wine that might be darker for you so you can see, all right? And so the strokes have a nice, chisel edge, petal effect, like a teardrop little effect. I keep saying teardrop. We want to do really nice curved tips. See the nice curved tips? If we do a leaf, what we're gonna do is yellow and green double load. Just like we double load before with the other flat brushes. Push, turn, left, okay? Let's turn left. What happens here? I don't have enough paint, so let's get some more. See that? We have a nice rounded edge right there. When we started, that's what it, that's what a lot of painters have a problem with. I actually tease them and say they're whiners because they don't want to use a flat brush for that, you know? All right, so I just did a no-no. You actually don't use the edge of this to pull your stem. I would go to my script liner or my flat brush, and I would pull a nice stem into my leaf halfway into the leaf, okay? Just like that, all right? Now, I will make chrysanthemums with this filbert. I will also make pretty little hydrangeas or lilacs, little five petal, simple little flowers, watch this. We just push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. You get this beautiful little, picking up fresh paint, simple petal, just by pushing and lifting it up in the center. And it's effortless, okay? Real simple. You can also tap. Are you liking this? I think it's fun to just show. Look at all the things you can do. My most asked question is, what do I use that brush for? So sometimes I go, I don't know. I need to find out first. <laughs> but I learned, I learned before I decided to teach you, I promise. Okay? Let's look at our fan brush. We have a fan brush and a scruffy brush. All right, I, mean, I think I'm gonna load the scruffy brush first. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna pick up white, wicker white. We go to the edge of the white petal. Purple, to the edge of the purple. See this? White, 
Hear how I'm pouncing? That's the key. You've got to pounce just like that. We come over here. We pounce just like that on the edge of the purple. Now, let me show you what happens. We want to pounce around. We want the purple to be up, for instance, or the green and yellow, whatever you do. The purple's up. We want to take, we have two colors. We want to pounce it around, and we want to keep the light and the dark color. We need more paint. Pounce. OK. Take a lean the brush on its edge if we want to taper off and taper off. Now, if we feel like we got too dark, you can come in here and pounce a little bit of white up in there. But the key is we pounce here, pick up your second color, pounce there the same way. We are not dab, 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 dab. We're not smearing it. We're pouncing. And then all we have to do is to control that brush. That's what you want to learn, brush control. We tip the brush on the edge ever so lightly and tap it out. Okay? Just like that. So I use this brush for mossing. We do it on wildflowers. We do all kinds of fun things with that brush. All right. Now, what we're going to do is show you how to use the fan brush. <clears throat> so, you know what? Let me get another plate so I can give you some fresh green. Okay. There we go. Now, two ways to use this. We're going to dip in the water. Let me come over here so you can see it well. I want to dip in the water, and I'm going to pull out and make it inky, both sides of the brush. This is the brush I wasn't sure how to use. And then I got really good at it. I love it. It's fun. OK? Now, we can also add a second color. Say we want some white or some yellow. Actually, white's not going to show too well up there, so I'll put a little bit of yellow out. OK? And so watch what happens when we start adding all this, this different effect up here with this brush. OK? Then gives you, oh, I'm on watercolor paper, too, which is really dry, so let me show you. <clears throat> Lots of water. Guess what else you can make with this? You can make fur, like little teeny little hairy, um, like bristles of fur on a bear, on a bunny rabbit. See, really teeny light fur effect. And what I'll do is I'll, we're not going to have a green animal, I'm sure, but I'll take that and then I'll come back with a second color and add that second color in there. See? And then I will layer brown, white, black, some layers like that. Okay, look how fast this grass happens across one of your pieces you might paint. Just like that, real fast. So if you took a little fine script liner, it would take a long time to do all that. Okay, now you can go on the chisel edge of this too and make taller. Like I've done sea oats like this. Look at that. Isn't that fast? You take this, put it up, do some sea oats like that. All right, or you can take a dab thick paint, thick paint, and dab it up it for wildflowers. Okay, just like that. You could take and make water. I'm just going to keep using the same brush because I think you all understand. If we do water, like here's your wave in the ocean, OK? Then you can take and dab, with the same brush even, some foam on the edge of the wave. We can get thick paint, real thick paint. Watch this. We can have evergreens. You have the tree and the branch at first course, but you would do that. Or look at a Christmas tree. I will stand on the edge. I'll get my shape first. I'll come back and get thick paint and do my streaks down like this both ways, OK? Now, I come back with the white, and I can pounce a little bit of white on the edge, all with this brush in my hand, and have snow. All right? Isn't that fun? Lots of little brushes, lots of little strokes that you can do. The script liner, I showed you how to make it inky. Or did I show you how to make it inky? We're going to make this brush nice and inky with water. OK. Inky, inky. And let me show you some fun things that we can do with this brush. We're going to take and we're going to make our curls. We're on watercolor paper, so you have to remember this is real dry. But the beautiful thing about this is that we can just keep picking up paint and not worry about it running out because we have lots of paint on here. Now, you can push and lift, push 
lift. I see how I lay the brush down when I push? That's how I do with a butterfly. I lay the bristles down for the body. See my little finger? It guides me away. Tip, pull, tip, pull for its antennas. So you can get really comfortable with this brush, but I want you to play with it. I want you to sit and do some strokes and see how it feels to work with it. When I'm doing downward strokes to right, I'm going to pull them all down. If I do an E, I break it into three strokes. See that? Of course, I have Donna, which is all easy. I did that on purpose, you know that. You notice I don't do Dewberry. There's too many R's. Okay, simple, simple. All right, lots of fun things that you can do with this brush. Controlling it by using the tip of it. And I use the edge of this, see my finger? If I want a straight line. And then I want to put some detail. See my little finger? Helps you do a lot of creativity with that brush. And the number one script liner is a little thicker, so if you want something with lots more control, it's shorter, so you can control it more with detail. All right, but this is great for lashes on animals and lots of other things. Well, we're going to come back with some more technique in just a minute. I thought it'd be fun now to show you some techniques that would be great to paint on top of. All right, what I wanted to do first is show you one that I really love, but sometimes it can be tricky. But we have a really good medium with um, this folk art medium. It makes it easy to do with success like every time. Uh, there are some things that you have to worry about with, with using crackling medium, and that's uh, mostly the humidity. Because I've tried this outdoors when it was been rainy, really rainy in Florida, and, and that sometimes will give you problems, but I really haven't had that problem with this paint, I mean with this medium. This is what we're going to do. I base coated this with berry wine. Now, I want to get this great crackle effect. And I want to show you these big cracks are when you paint the paint really thick, and these thin, thinner, smaller cracks are when the paint's been put on really lightly. All right, so what I've done is I base coated first, like I did my dining room table, all berry wine, because it, it was like it needed some care. <laughs> then I put on the medium, which is clear. Oops, there we go. <laughs> then I stroke this medium on right on top of the berry wine, just like this. Then I let it dry, okay? And you don't have to let it dry very long, just till it's not, until it doesn't feel tacky. Okay, but it can dry. It can be sitting like that up for tw up to 24 hours. Now I'm going to pick up my paint with a flat, smooth brush. Now I've even used a roller brush, a roller sponge brush, which is possible too. But there's a little trick, and all you have to do is, if you stroke over the same area, see, like right here where I'm going. If I stroke right back over that again, I will pull up and make a mess. See, because it starts cracking right away. So what you want to do is go ever so lightly next to that stroke because if you go on top of that you start if you go like that you start picking it up and tend to mess it up so that you won't have any cracks where you do that now I have had a difficulty when I've gone on um, a tall side of a china cabinet and put heavy heavy paint and I didn't lay the china cabinet down and it started sliding because I was doing my I paint too thick so just be careful lay it down flat so it's easier to work with and voila look at that it's like amazing. And I put it on kind of heavy, and it gave that real thick. And this also dried over 24 hours. I mean, right at 24 hours, and it's still crackling strong. So follow your directions, and it makes it really easy. But that's actually a simple little thing to do. And it gave my table a brand new look. Then I painted fruit on top of it and had a great look on top of that. So I want to show you, though, when, see these little splatters right here? Let me show you how fun it is just to use a toothbrush and a little bit of burr number. Now what I will do, if you want to hand paint on this, you can, but what will happen is it will crack the fruit too, or whatever paint you do. So you would spray seal it. I've got some great sealers right here that I'm talking about, and they're lacquers. And what I love about lacquers is they dry really quick. Now what's good is I have lacquers that are satin, gloss, and 
um, a matte finish so you can get all kinds of looks I like the satin when I'm working on furniture because it just looks richer so you spray the satin that seals it and then you hand paint on it and then it won't crack any further but then I like to coat if I'm using a table I'm gonna get this ready you watch me get this ready while I'm telling you on a table I will take and put three to four coats of water water soluble varnish and let each coat dry and then I can eat on it and scrub it and have no problem with it or you could put a lot of coats of lacquer but I'd rather do a heavier varnish okay now this is just an old toothbrush and my water and this is just plain paint okay now I will take and take my nail and splatter it right here first before I go to my piece and depending how much splatter you want, and it gives it that old age antique look. You can even do that on fabric, which I think you'll really like seeing that done on fabric. I also have painted on a, a fabric pillow right here. I want to bring up front and show you how simple that is. And what I did was, because it's kind of hard sometimes on the texture, so I sponged the background green so that it would dry and be a little bit harder. So that's a little trick that I do sometimes. But I stretched t-shirts, whatever. And the key to painting on this, it's the same paint, same strokes as I was doing before. The key to painting on this is that if you want to heat set it, what you need to do is, I like throw it in the dryer, but you can take an even iron over it, okay? And do, let me put a leaf on here and let me show you. I've used even the floating medium. Oops, sorry. Look at this, you can stroke right on top of here. I picked up my angle brush, but I know I can do it with an angle brush too, look at that, okay? You take and you put lots of paint and you can wash it, dry it. I've even bleached white t-shirts with our paint on it. And what happens is it's just bright as can be still. I mean, I take the little kids' night shirts and bleach them and get out those old spots and it would look still look good. Okay, that's fabric, lots of fun. All right, now let's show you another medium that's really fun. And that's a polish. I like to take these polishes and I would like to take a piece, say I wanna age this. I've got, I've got three different colors. I've got a brown, a black. Let me get this plate here again. A brown, black, and a white, okay? So it's a real thin liquid, but it polishes it. It gives it a sheen and gives it a subtle look at the same time. Now watch what I do. I just pour it on there or into your rag. I like a soft white towel. Here's t-shirt material. And you just rub it at any consistency you want. You can let it just be a light whitewash look i can pick up the little bit of brown and polish it and what it'll do you don't seal it first what it does is it grabs right into your paint see so we have two looks you can have this antique polish look which kind of tea stains it a little bit just gives it a little bit of an aged look or a white to settle down your look but what it does also is it gives it a nice sheen when you do it so that's kind of fun, especially if you have a tray or something that has carvings in it. I put a whitewash on that, and I put that shabby chic white look. looks really great. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to use painter sponges and how much fun those can be. I like to put in the background different faux finishes. I have um, a blue faux finish I'm going to show you in a minute, but I want to use a stencil with my painter sponge. Okay? Now, I have a faux surface already done for you that I will pick up in just a minute and show it to you. But what I'm gonna do right here, put this, a little bit of a butter pecan, and then we're gonna come right up here to a stencil. Now I love stencils, stencils that are on any kind of perfect square, any kind of perfect um, thing that you'd have to measure and tape off like picket fence, okay? And so what we want to do, watch this. I want to take, get a little bit on your sponge like this. And see, these I made so you can do curves, like you can do curved areas. You put your finger along the straight edge and get a nice edge like that. But, so I paint with these also. But look at the picket. Instead of using stencil brushes, which take a lot longer, and I have no patience, I have seven children, and I started painting because I wanted to do something quick and easy to decorate my house and have fun while I was doing it. 
I should tape this down, it'd be easier, but I want you to see just that quick, you can go and have a beautiful faux finish, a brick in the background. And I think that looks really fun and easy. There's all kinds of stencils out there like that for you so that you can accomplish a whole different look in the background and then paint leaves and stuff on top of it. I also made this sponge square so that you get the same size as the brick so you can get another look this way too by pulling it down with that edge. So think about anything that you would have to normally measure and tape off, we don't want to do. I also like to get this faux finish, which is great for doing a wall too. I moved my clip out to put that back forth. All right, so to get this effect with the faux you could use a little scruffy brush like I was showing you earlier, but take a long time. So I like to use a car sponge or a big grout sponge that you can grab, all right, and have this edge. We're going to take and go into lots of white. Just like if you're faux the wall, what you're going to do, a lot of people think you put one color and then go get the second color. I'm, I'm just going to put a little bit here so I can get started to show you to how I'm getting this effect. The easiest way is to make circles first. Let me move this because it's in the way now, okay? Circles first, which covers a large area quicker. And even that looks pretty when you finish the wall. Just a faux look. And then you can go back and tap it out. Okay, if you feel like you need more blue or more white, just like this with the faux effect. And if you tap every inch of a room, it'll, it kills your wrist. But if you take and you cover a big area really quick with the sponge, it, it, goes, it just makes the whole project go so much faster. The scruffy brush is great for getting inside carvings and molding and grooves on your, on your surface that you're painting. But you could get this beautiful faux effect just like this. And let me show you how good this is going to look when I take and put some little floated leaves on here. I'm collecting a lot of plates here. There we go. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to pick up our brush and let's stroke, showing you floating medium, showing you how you would use this floating medium to achieve a shadow leafing effect. Now, I'm going to show you just a really quick, fun idea to come out of that brick or on your faux finish, OK? If you have a vine going across here, Look how it just pops out on that blue, and I think it looks so pretty. I love blue for any even little nurseries and little kids' rooms, because it, it can be the sky, and then you can go back and put wildflowers or birds or whatever, or a big tree. It gives a soft, nice look, OK? So we're going to put the leaf. And see, I multi-load that brush and put some brown in that leaf, because I had the same brush with white and brown on it when I started. Now, here we go, painting a few big leaves. All right, now I'm going to take my smaller brush. And let's say I want it to be a dirty brush, actually, because I want both those colors in it, the green and the brown, OK? So this is how we do it. We take and we wipe off the excess paint. We go to our, our puddle of floating medium and clean our brush. Like, you would have Brush Plus will take and clean all this paint out of your brush. And then you take the Brush Plus and form your bristles into a nice flat bristle. OK, so you can store it. But what we're going to do now is scrape all this off, because this is floating medium. I was talking to you about cleaning it with a Brush Plus, because you get the same effect. But I wouldn't paint with my Brush Plus, OK? All right, now, here we go. Look what happens when you start putting those shadow leaves. Is that amazing? OK, now, one more trick with the floating medium. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to clean this brush all off. Now, I'm going to load the brush totally with floating medium. See that? All floating medium. Now, this paint's running into each other, so I'm going to side load a little bit of burn umber, just ever so lightly on the edge. OK? Now, if this is dry, which is not, so I'm going to have to be very careful, I could go along this edge and give it depth by just shadowing the little bit of the edge. I do this a lot with fruit. So it looks like this just pops up off of my piece. 
do that. And you shadow it and it just uh, jumps off of there for you. All right, now I have a lot of fun with that. I use floating meaning to shadow a lot of things to give it depth, especially if you want to float. When you see a project that says float <laughs> and you have to use water and you might not be very good at it, all right, that makes it easier for anybody, especially new painters. All right, now what we want to do is I want to pull out some new paint that I love. I haven't used this before and I think you're going to love it when you start using it because it's new for me and it's fun, fun, fun. And what it is, it's painting on glass, ceramic, clear glass, or ceramic glass. Look at this. Any non-porous is what I use it on. I've even had fun. I've even painted a little bit on mailboxes too. I've had fun with it. But let me tell you what we do. I have brushes for this and I want to show you. See, I'm putting out all the colors that I want to. This is a pretty palette of color. This paint's fluffy and beautiful. What you're going to love about this paint is that as we stroke with this, we can do a couple of different things. We can take, look at some of these pieces before I paint. I want to show you, I've used this, my new brushes that I'm using. They're a different color. Look, same size as I've been showing you during our, our video here. We're the same brushes, but it's a white bristle, so you can tell the difference, which means it's a softer bristle. It's really soft, so you don't get the brush strokes. You, it minimizes the strokes, so the paint lays on there better. Okay, and I'll show you how to use those. Here we are on glass, clear glass, metal. Then we come down here. Let's look. This is tile, like right in your kitchen. It's fun, I put four tile squares together here. And these are great for trivets too, and there's a ceramic dish. But if you're gonna use it on a ceramic dish, I would use it with reverse painting. And I wanna show you how I've done that because just like a car will scratch, if you cut on top of this, it's gonna scratch, all right? So what we wanna do is we're gonna reverse paint. It's really kind of fun. You would paint what goes here first, all right? And then you'd go back and paint the next color on top of that. You know what, I just pulled out, oh, I didn't pull out the right color for this. Let me show you real quick. Okay, these are soft bristles. You wet them, you put them on the paper towel. We work this color in right there. Okay, and then we're gonna stroke right over where those calyx are. Reverse paint so that it shows through. All right, see how it's showing through? Isn't that fun? All right. But we had to put the calyx first. You won't believe how many times I painted this and went back and had to take it off again because I forgot to put the calyx first. Okay, there we go. So you have to let it dry in between, which I usually don't have to do. So see, I've let this dry for a few minutes. Okay, and then we pounce with these soft bristles. We come back and we pounce on here and you can pounce a whole finish on the back. And look at this. You have a really pretty effect with it just pouncing, and that's reverse painting. So I want you to see that these bristles, I even have the scruffy with the soft bristles. Really simple. All you do is put, put your pieces in a cool oven after they're dry for one hour. You put them in a cool oven. You turn it up and bake for 30 minutes. Then you turn it off, and you let it sit, and the next morning I pull it out. Or you can even let it air dry, and it's so durable, you can even put it in the dishwasher and wash it and not even worry about it. But letting it air dry helps you to be able to do surfaces that you wouldn't be putting in your oven. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shown you today. I hope you've learned a lot, and I hope that you take and practice some of this that we've taught you and have a good time painting. Thank you.